Hi everyone. Welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings, episode twenty-three, where Ioe needs to do more if he wants to convince Katori to stay at the school and become the fourth member of the Soaring Club. Because, as of last episode, Katori still wants to drop out of the school. And was fighting with Ioi for that withdrawal letter. But at least we're able to see some development with Katori because she was able to share her experience and her history about why she ended up in a wheelchair. And in return, Ioi shared his history with Katori about why he ended up at the school. And it's because they both sustained injuries. So at least um, Katori is able to relate some of her experience with Ayoi. I'm not sure about Ageha yet, because um, Ageha got in an argument with Katori in the last episode. So let's see how how all that plays out. So right now they're at school, and I wonder what's going on. Okay, so um, at lunch break, Agatha and I were called to the staff room. So what happened? Okay, it's because we were both absent yesterday. So it looks like they were caught by the attendants. So we told the truth and said we were hanging out, and got a really severe scolding from our homeroom teacher. So now Ageha and Ayoi have a cut on the record because of, well, you know why. Well, that can't be helped. So they go, well, we had to spend a day with、um, Katori, and we're hoping that we would make it inviting for her to come back to the school. But as a result, we both sacrificed and got a cut on our record. It's a good thing that they didn't contact our parents. Well, usually standard protocols like um, you have to talk to your parents if um, any kind of discipline was issued. And cutting class is an offense that can be um disciplined.、Mm. And we do know from Agha's parents that um,、uh, she finds out that um, Agha cut class um. She'd be in. She'd be in for a pretty big punishment. So Agatha isn't her usual cheerful self this morning. So going back to that argument with Katori,、um, Agatha kind of feels upset about it, and she kind of realizes that she was in the wrong. But、I'm sure that Agatha has good intents. It's just that、um, the way that she presented it to Katori was in a pretty harsh tone. And then when she yelled at her about, "It's because of you, like this, that it's really hard for people to understand you," that kind of really stirred up Katori. Well, don't worry about it. You know, Katori understands why you did that. Well, actually, she was regretting it as well. The fact that、um, she had an argument with Ageha. But Katori was right on some of the remarks. Well, that's how Ageha feels. Well, you know, you don't kiss up to people, though, do you? Well, I wonder why could Agatha say this? So it's like、um, even though I'm good at socializing, I don't really have anyone close to talk to, which is a bad thing. 
Well, I guess Agatha can get along with anyone, but it doesn't feel like there is anyone she is particularly particularly close to. And to be honest, I thought that was a little strange. Well, I'm the same. I got along with everyone in the cycle racing club, but I couldn't talk to them in the same way I could talk to you people. Well, that's a question of time, and I hadn't spent the same amount of time with them. That's true. So Agatha, me and the others were each other's very first friends here in this neighborhood, back before I can even remember. If there was anyone else who I go along with, I'm pretty sure that's Katori. Okay, so why is he seeing all the stuff in his head, like idiot moron the cohead? So suddenly all those insults spring into mind. Hmm. Do we really get along? Okay, so Katori was also right that um you're only doing this because the teacher made you do so. I was like, um, well, since Agatha is good at talking to people, maybe um, she can use her skills to convince Katori to come back to school. But I'm pretty sure for Katori, it's a pretty big exception because um really have to figure out what's bothering her and it probably has something to do with them um, the fact that she's in a wheelchair but I always like um well even if you weren't toad soul you were worried about Katori anyways weren't you <laughs> okay Alright. Hmm. So Katori's taking a day off school today as well, right? So Agatha thought it was all her fault and was blaming herself. Well, this morning when I woke up, Katori had already left. So there were signs that the kitchen had been messed up. And it looked like she had been searching for that withdrawal notice that I hid. So once again, Katori is still bent on leaving the school. So actually, it was in the drawer in my room. So he tricked her by hiding in the kitchen. But it turned out that um, I only hid it in his room. So going back to Agatha, he's like, um, well, it's not your fault that um, Katori hasn't come to school. Well, I don't think it was ever Agatha's fault that um, Katori doesn't want to come to school anymore. Well, it's not just what I think. I'm almost completely certain. Well, the truth is... I wonder if I, I was going to share some of the history with Katori with um, Agatha. Okay, so um, he wants to make sure that this is a private conversation. Hmm, so there was, there was nobody passing, so I didn't have to worry about anyone hearing. Katori wants to quit school. Okay, so he shares the important message with um, Agatha. <laughs> so from a long time ago, it seems like she had decided before I came back here. <laughs> so then... Well, it's not because she argued with the girls in the class. There must be a deeper reason to it. And... We're not really sure why at this point.
So I think that it also has the reason for her recent behavior and attitude. And it makes sense with them um, why Katori does not want to join the Soaring Club. Because they can, well, I'm going to be dropping out anyway, so there's no point of me joining this club. Yeah, so um, since she was planning to quit school soon, she thought it would just cause problems for us. So I wonder how the, yesterday's argument fits into the um, issue. Was well, because you both misunderstood each other. So I wonder how Agatha feels now that she knows that Katori is playing on Queen's school. And that's why she's been trying to get that withdrawal letter back from Aoi for quite some time. Well, since episode 7 of my recording. So Agatha takes her unfocused anger out on me by hitting my chest. Well, that's not a good way to express your frustration. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, so she's upset at Aoi for like, um... Why did you hide this all from me? For the whole time. All I found out by coincidence. And also, ouch, um, I can't just go around telling other people her secrets, you know. I just picked up the withdrawal notice by coincidence, so I didn't know when she was planning or submitting it. Plan on submitting it, even if she was really serious about it. I couldn't exactly ask her about it either. Okay, so more attacks. I'm sorry, okay, okay, that hurts, seriously. So Stop punching me. And then... And I thought that she didn't want to quit school anymore, but... She'd be coming to school helping with the meal preparations at the dormitory and it looked like she was enjoying herself. Well, I just assumed that everything was okay for now. Well, I think I'm um, starting to change when um, Katori was able to confirm that I was the one that took the withdrawal letter away. I'm not sure if um, they'll be able to find Katori on the way back. Because um, Katori is kind of mysterious. She hides in places. I'm pretty sure she knows by now that the duck trick doesn't work anymore. They're using hat to watch out for um, people like Aoi and Ageha. Yeah, sure. In an attempt to offer some comfort to Ageha, who is now crying, I stroked her head. Well, anyways, today's Friday. It was the deadline of the grace period for the Gathering Club members given to us by the Student Council Vice President Akari Kumoi. Okay, so we'll go back to that club issue where um, they're trying to find the last member and for some reason Amani isn't putting in her effort to get the last club member. So now they're checking on what happened or what's happening to the Soaring Club right now. So now the club... So the Vice President, um... 
he's on time and is checking to make sure that there is four members and they're doing something. And I'm not really sure why Amani is all upset, given that she didn't do anything to help situation sort the situation out. Mm. <laughs> so why did Kaneko show up? So what does um Akari or how does she feel? So a vein was clearly visible on the vice president's temple. But obviously I don't think it fools Akari in any way. So, um, so who's this person? I think she's talking about Kanako. Well, what do you mean? She's the new member. So I wonder um how Kanaka knows all about this and is stepping in to pose as member number four. Well then again, I'm not really sure. I don't think he's part of the club anyways. He's just posing to um make sure this club gets a check under the vice president's radar. But for her, she obviously does not believe in such cover up. Well, please explain. Okay, so it's like, a, well, I'm pretty sure Kanako is just um, someone that signed up to fill the quota, but she's not an active member, so th that doesn't count. So, well, how do you know about that then? Well, I'm pretty sure the student council is. Um, inclined to shut this club down so that um, they can get all those complaints resolved. So I'm pretty sure they were hoping that the club would actually shut down because like, well, let's get all those complaints out the window. Um, we're tired of them. So who's the um, ghost member? Okay, so like um, they don't trust Kanako being a sign up because like um, well you've posed as a member for so many different clubs, and you didn't actually participate, so you don't count anymore, and we don't trust you as a new sign up. So the problem with Kanako is like, um, well, I get bored easily, so I jump from club to club. So, in a sense, it's like um, she's a ghost member because she doesn't really actively participate in any of the clubs and um, just stops going. Well, at this point, there's nothing you can do to convince the student council that um you're gonna be a seriously devoted club member. Wait, you two are in the same class? Well, I guess they're in the same grade. Well, I don't think sweet talking is gonna do anything as well. Okay, so she gets rid of Kanako with a flat refusal. Well, it seems that she used to deal with them. Or she's used to dealing with her. Okay, so now. Okay, so minus Kanako, who else? Uh, no, no one. Okay, so I'm officially pulling the um status of a club for this soaring club. 
副会長これ。So I、um, wonder if Amari has another way to convince the student council president or the vice president that um there is a club member. Okay. So what do you think? Koko Sunen de Fry to Stano was sent it no Ichido Kiri. So they mo, Jugio Chu to you both. So now another problem is like um they're not doing anything in the club. There's very little um achievements and progress, and at the same time it's taking up class time. Um, so the problem is that um, there's more problems than not having enough club members. Like um, there's no proof that this club is doing anything meaningful or um productive, and all the things that um. Mari tries to show to the student council vice president.、Um, it's not convincing. It's like、oh, I'd rather give this place to another circle that's trying to be a club because I'm pretty sure they have a good record of showing that they can be productive and making all these、um, achievements versus this club that's kind of dormant. <laughs> But I'm just, I think I'm just using her stats like um. Well, if you're gonna shut down my club, I'm just gonna go elsewhere, and I'll see how the entire school's reputation will fare. Okay, so she's talking about some story about Iska. The vice president said nothing as she looked at her, as trying to figure out what the true meaning is. So this is it. The in was one only, not two. The scientific report was not. But still, um, so going back to the um. Requirements and rules. This club isn't really doing anything, and it's really, really small to be occupying a huge space and using up lots of school resources. So what is he gonna say now? So what is she looking at? Oh, so um, Katori showed up. She entered in at some point. She said to Amane, "So what is she give, going to give back?" So what is Katori thinking about at this point? Okay, so she goes right up to Amane. So next to the glider with its sheet removed, she was looking down slightly at something on her lap. So Amane walked over to her. What is it? I wonder if it's a paper airplane. So Katori looks at the white sleek aircraft, and then she held 
out the thing that was on her lap, a photograph. So can I go to, to this place? Oh, so what's this? Um, Amaya's kind of wondering about the photograph. So when Amaya saw it, she was wide-eyed with surprise. So for some reason, Amaya knows the photograph very well. Tears walled up in her eyes. And it kind of got Agatha curious about it. I don't know. Agatha and I walked over there to take a look at the photograph that Katori was hi was holding. So, a photograph of the clouds. A sunset dyed in indigo and in orange? Or was it sunrise? It can be either. In the beautiful color clear morning glow was one huge row of clouds which looked like a passage extended across the sky. Hmm. So this must be the passage of clouds. So the first item on Katori's notebook. Yeah, it's true. Nice cloud, nice view. Agatha and I and Kanako and the Vice President were all fascinated by the miraculous spect spectacle shown in the photograph. So Katori asked the same question again. And for a moment I couldn't make the mental connection between the question and the view in the photograph. What? So Ayo doesn't know what Katori is asking about. I'm pretty sure it's like, um, well, can I... Am I able to go to this kind of place with um, that glider? Well, that was because it was a place too far away to be associated with the word go. It was like, maybe, well, well maybe because of Ayo has never flown, so he doesn't know anything about this place. So you want to go here, above the clouds? Hmm, so with this glider. As I looked at the photograph, I envisioned the white aircraft without an engine flying across the sky that I rem remember being so graceful, great, and solemn. Hmm, that really was a miraculous sight. All of us, including Akari, even held our breath as we waited for Amani's answer. Can I go to this place? <laughs> because as you finally respond and says, yeah, you can go there. She murmured as she took the photograph and looked at it nostalgically. Okay. Amane who had until now or who had until just now was in tears in her eyes smiled happily as she said that name. So the picture kind of sparked an interest for Katori. It's like, um, well, I want to go to this place and now that I know that this club is going to help me reach there. Well, I'm pretty sure she's not a burden at this point. She's a helpful, or she, she's of great help at this point. She spoke with both fear and a lack of confidence in her voice. But however, in her eyes showed to be a strong determination. 
And when Amaya saw those eyes, she answered, Okay, you're welcome. So it's kind of a surprise that Katori just popped in. Alright, so this, this looks like a opening theme. I'm just gonna skip it to um, save time. But I'm pretty sure you can find this also online. Somewhere. Oh, I can't skip this. I kind of wonder if I'm kind of still part of the club or um. She um, decided to let go because, like, well, you have enough members, so there's no purpose of me being in this club. But her, her record of changing clubs all the time makes it obvious that she's just in there to fill in the quota. So, yeah. so I wonder what the vice president, principal, or, uh, or the vice president of the student council, Akari, has to say about it. Hmm, so you're kind of upset now, Akari. Uh, maybe it's because of you hoping that you would close the club for good, but something unexpected happened, and now it makes it really hard for you to close the club. Well, at least she doesn't seem upset about it. Ah, so it's like, um, well, I didn't want to do this in the first place. It's because um, other clubs are complaining about how they can't be a club and they're doing something productive. They have members. Whereas the Soaring Club is a club that's not doing anything. It's like, it's not fair. So, um, we want you to, to do something to, um, ensure fairness among everyone, including all clubs. So I think um, they were pressuring the student council and it got to the point where they had to take action. And Akari's like, well, I didn't want to do this, but I'm being pressured to, um, so I had to do something about it before, um, the complaints become very serious, and, um... Okay, so what about Kanako now? Hmm, so now she's quite asking about Ayoi. Oh, he's the dorm mother. I wonder if he, she threw a curveball at, at Akari. So, I'm pretty sure Akari knows a lot about um, Amane. Even though she's smart, um, she's antisocial, she's unapproachable, and it's hard for anyone to come close to her. And it's like, um, I'm kind of surprised that um, someone that's new to this place could be able to... Um, Forms the kind of connection with um, that um, mysterious Amani Mochizuki.
So. Okay. Okay, so, um... Now they have enough members to, um, meet the, um... Minimum requirements for, um, this to be a club. And Kanako is, um... Oh, okay, so Kanako, Kanako just left with, um, Akari. So now they're kind of wondering about the photographs, like, um... It's kind of special, and why don't we know more about it? Or why don't we talk more about it? Hmm, but these cars are a very unusual shape. Yeah, that's true. I've never seen clouds like this before. Okay. Hmm. So what on earth is this photograph? It was a really beautiful photograph. However, it was the same as the pictures in an old photo album. The sort of that you would take to the Photoshop to have it developed and was printed on a paper with logos on the back. Oh, so them, those old film cameras, um, once um, your film is used up, you take it to the, the developing, or some, some kind of Photoshop, they would develop the film and turn it into a photograph. Now obviously, um, the, on the back of the um, photo, it's gonna have like Kodak on it. So like um what you see in the photo is some um strange phenomenon and it happens very rarely. Morning Okay. Hmm. A path of clouds like this, several kilometers long. Oh, so that must be a, a very long time ago. Okay. Hmm, so this photo was taken in Kazegarura, so the city that they're currently in. And this was some past accomplishment from the Soaring Club. Hmm, so do you think that this amazing spectacle occurred right here in my hometown and the person who took this photograph was a member of the club to which I now belong? Well, even though the thing that I thought of was so far away has now become a lot closer, it still doesn't mean seem to be real somehow. Well, I think that I felt something along the lines of, Wow, or dude, that's amazing. Her face looked like she was about to say, I just recall something, or realize something. So what is it now? Mm-hmm. So that means... Okay, so you looked at it again. If you wanted to take a photograph from above the clouds, at the very least, the camera would have to be in a position higher than the clouds. Well, I don't know why they don't realize that um, 
they took it while airborne. Hmm. So did the glider actually fly this high? Okay, so I was more um like astonished about how um this glider can fly so high that they're able to take a picture like that. A glider, an airplane with no engines. So Agaha and I turned to look at the white aircraft. So I don't know how many meters it was. And this wasn't just imagination, but when I picture it actually flying above the clouds, it looked kind of unreliable. Okay, so the Sworn Club did have a pretty spotty record. It did lose its membership at least once. Okay, so um, she has no connection with the photograph. It's like, um, well, when I came here, this was what it was. It was just the slider and um, a photograph with um, this picture on it. And once again, we go back to Iska, which. I don't know who she is. Oh, okay, so um, when Amaya first showed up, it was just parts and this photograph. And they go, so Amaya and Iska were excited about this photograph as well, and they were hoping to accomplish this, so they built a glider. Hmm, Iska. So yeah, so I was kind of wondering why Amani keeps mentioning Iska. So who's this Iska person? Yeah, who's her? So does Couture have another photograph to show them? Oh, so the notebook. And for some reason, Amane has some kind of reaction to it. So I found the photo in this notebook. Oh, so the notebook actually belonged to Iska. And I'm pretty sure that also means that Iska used to live in the Flying Fish Dormitory. And she was the previous tenant before um, Katori moved in. And Amane makes the connections like, um, so you must be living the flying fish manor. A little surprised to hear that name all of a sudden, Katori nodded. Okay, so Katori looked at the other pages in the notebook and had a diary and some words about Amane. So for some reason, Amai didn't answer and looked at the worn cover of the notebook. And I think um, Katori enjoyed all the stories that Iska was writing in the notebook and it kind of gave her the inspiration. Hey, I want to do this as well. Okay, 
でももっとずっと昔のことだと思ってたから日記の日付だとイスカたちはもうとくに卒業してるはずだし well, that's true. まだ続けてるなんて思っても見なかった。Okay. Hmm. So, um, if we're interested in gliders, why didn't you come to check out the soaring club then? Well, I think Victoria did, but much later. I asked in a light hearted manner. Actually, she was interested in them. That just looking at a real glider makes her eyes sparkle with wonder. So the owner of the diary might no longer be around, though. So Victoria held tightly to the hem of her skirt. So I'm pretty sure come. So Victoria was probably feeling discouraged because of the fact that she's in a wheelchair. And it's like, um, I wouldn't qualify. I would be made fun of if I joined this club. So, listening to her words, I felt a dull pain coming from my right knee. But then again, um, Ayoi also has an injury. Somewhere that she couldn't enter. That's what she believed, and that's why she didn't. Try to find out about the current status of the Soaring Club. It might have been similar to me after I injured my knee and tried to avoid hearing any information about the Cycling Racing Club. And the more I knew, the more envious I would become. So, go back to episode one, Katori was, um, All inspired when um, she saw. Well, she was surprised when she saw the glider flying above. That was the time that Katori and I first met. So, episode one and two. In that peaceful landscape, Hitori watched the white aircraft flying over with such enthusiasm. Okay. So, in mind of her Katori story, she took a deep breath. So, Mai put the book on the table but didn't read it straight away and instead went. To boil some water in the electric kettle first. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop here. This is enough for episode 23. So Katori came at the right moment to save the Soaring Club from its closure by the Student Council Vice President, Akari, and now the Student Council has a reason to prove that the Soaring Club should still exist. But going to that powerful photograph, Presented by Katori. It serves as an inspiration for many people, including Amane, to be a part of the Soaring Club, the ability to soar through the sky with a glider. And we kind of see all these connections that are forming. The fact that、um, Amane's friend Iska used to live in the Flying Fish dormitory, the room that Katori is currently in, and she had this notebook. With all these stories about being in the glider. And I'm not sure where she went, but Katori picked it up. And when she read through it, it inspired her to be part of the、um, Soaring Club as well. And the reason why she didn't join was because、um, she kind of recognized her limitations in a wheelchair. And it kind of discouraged her. But now that she's part of the club now, We'll see what happens next in the next episodes. So, with that in mind, I'll see you later.